Hey everybody, it's me, Hugh Riley. It's Liquid Lunch. We're coming at you live from the Tula restaurant at the top of the Harbor Castle Weston. And uh, this is a first. It's a first. This and, uh, <laughs> I can't see you, but it's a first. <laughs> we got the sun over there. We got some, uh, you an know, it's like. Amazing view, though. It, it's an amazing view. It kind of reminds me of uh, Dieppe. Dieppe. You know, it's like the practice, practice for the D-Day. So, ah, uh, but uh, okay. we're, we're still, we're having a great time here and we yes, you might like have we're some. we're touching the sky. It's so neat. Yeah, we're, we're up so here. Up. It's great out here, uh, actually. And uh, we, got a, we got a really big show because we're here. It's a special. We're doing this in conjunction with PBN. Uh, the yes. uh, Professional Business Network. Yeah, right, Connie? Some guys. Yes, correct. We have Connie Hill here, who's the director yes. of PBN. And uh, so, Connie, great to have you on the show. Thank you. Yeah, it's a great venue. Beautiful view of the island, the lake. It's yep. nice to be here in the daylight to enjoy it. it. Oh, yeah. Yes, it is. Well, the, da <laughs> the daylight's going down. <laughs> it's, yeah, but it's still summer, so yes. we still have the light here. But anyway, Connie, great to have you on the show. So, first of all, uh, Tell us about PBN. You're the director. Right. How, first of all, how long have you been the director? Uh, for some years. PBN started in 2001. Kareem Rashaw, he started it, founded it. And uh, so it's been going strong for, uh, you know, since 2001. So 10 years, you guys are into your double digits now. Yeah, double digits. And uh, lots of great sponsors, lots of great guests, many success stories from the networking event. And that's so, what we're going to hear from right. today too, right, Connie? Right. And then we're going to network later on. And we're going to network. Okay. Wine, networking, a beautiful view. You know, at night you can see the skyline, the city skyline here, so it's Well, charming. you guys know what you're doing because you picked a great spot. Yeah. <laughs> this very is nice. nice. This is pretty sweet. Yeah. It's very nice. Okay, yeah. so before I, you know, like there's a lot of different networking uh, groups and organizations, so PBN, Professional Business Network, like what, there's got to be something unique, special about it. Yeah, well, you know, it's the um, it's held on the last Wednesday of each month, and um, there's always a guest speaker. Um, you know, a lot of people bring guests with them. Uh, some of the events draw in the hundreds, and it's always held here at Tula. Uh, PBN has lots of great benefits, and you know, we encourage people to go onto our website, pbn.ca, to see some of the benefits of membership. But uh, our sponsors have stayed with us faithfully, and uh, the guests that come uh, look forward to meeting each other every month and coming in and having a glass of wine at Tula. So just uh, PBN stands for Professional Business Network, correct? Correct. Okay, okay. Just wanted to make sure that we got that out there. Okay, and who's the speaker tonight? I'm putting you, I know I'm putting you on the spot. I'm going to let them tell you themselves okay. later. Okay, all right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and you know, in terms of you know, as a membership, uh, um, you know, it's an ideal forum. So, um, you know, people become a member, they get the complimentary admission, um, they can showcase their company, they can get up and tell a little story about their company and how they founded it and that kind of thing, and. Um, you know, it's also a great opportunity to exchange information too, right? To get tips on, you know, um, uh, from other businesses that maybe you're struggling with. Perhaps you can kind of get some information from each other that way too, right? So it's right. not just, it's about exchanging information as well as trying to promote your business, right? Right. And lots of people, um, you know, their industries interconnect and they interlink with each other. Maybe someone's building, uh, you know, doing housing in um, Africa and someone else is doing another project and they end up collaborating on these projects. So there's a lot of great success stories that we hear about after each evening where people will tell us, oh, you know, I met this person and it's a perfect fit for what I'm doing. So that's what networking is really about and that's why it's been such a great forum, you know, for more than 10 years now. And, um, you know, it's, been, it's just constantly growing. And the fact that it's actually lasted 10 years actually is a testament to, to what the, it does. Yeah. And in terms of the benefits, I mean, people come, they get their headshot taken, which they use for their social networking. They use it on their LinkedIn page and, um, or Twitter, Facebook, etc. But there's always a photo, a professional business photo taken of them that evening. Okay. And the photographer is always here doing that. And, um, yeah, I mean, you're going to see yourself tonight firsthand, just how much fun it is and how much networking actually goes on. And do you actually, I'm sorry, Hugh. Go ahead, ask. No, go you ahead. go. 
I was going to ask, I was going to say, so do you also help the businesses with the actual social networking portion of it? Because you're helping to take the picture. So do you actually explain? Because some, some businesses may not know what you know Facebook is and LinkedIn and all of these kinds of Twitter and all those. Right. Things. Is there a, a portion, an education portion on that? Um, I myself do that, but okay. PBN doesn't at this time provide that because, okay. you know, we just sort of stick to our niche, which is connecting people. Okay. Um, you know, maybe down the road there'll be a role for that. Lots of people want to get more involved and get some hands-on help with it. Uh, right now, we don't have that in place. But people do get up and talk about their business. Like I say, every evening there's two or three speakers that get up and they'll tell you what they do, how they're doing it, why they're the best at it. And then immediately people come up and ask them questions and start to understand a little bit more. We've had people speak about youth networking they do and youth organizations nice. and all kinds of different things. Nice. So um, the minute someone speaks, then they're instantly, everyone understands who they are and what they're doing. Well, I'm thinking too that, you know, because it is the kind of network that it is that and with social network is a growth industry that right. somebody might come to one of the events and meet somebody that's doing that kind of social networking for right. people, right? Right. Because it's really just people doing business meeting other people doing business right and lots of people uh, like to get face to face there are many face to face businesses and you know you can stay on your keyboard and stay on LinkedIn and after a while people really want to meet face to face and if you look at the statistics face to face networking um, is you know more than 50% more successful than just sending someone an email or you know even a cold call or a phone call or well so. you make that emotional connection too right. with the face to face and also adds credibility yeah. to what you're doing because it is one thing to get an email but it's another thing once you get the email you still want to meet the person you still want to get a feel well you never right. know and especially you know maybe when you've had that glass of wine you know right. you, you loosen up enough to right. share something that you might not otherwise share right. and that could lead to a whole new business opportunity right. that's right? true right. that's true that's okay true. I want to ask you because yeah. you got the website pbn.ca yeah. and you mentioned the success stories do you get do you put some of those success stories yeah, up on the we've website we've got testimonials um, for sure yeah we definitely have testimonials we've got some stories on the site and you're gonna to talk to a few people later today they're gonna to tell you firsthand what they do and in a very big way like you know global big. okay well listen I'll yeah. tell you is there anything else you, you want to mention because we're just uh, about to move on to our first guest of the day but is there anything else you want to make sure we know well, about, just honey? you know we encourage everyone to join us come out to PBN come out and meet us see what we're about you know and then uh, you know we can explain to them uh, you know firsthand more about the membership yeah and this is for every type of business right Connie, every type of business. So it doesn't matter what line, what industry you are in? No. There's okay. so much diversity here. I mean, it's really uh, astounding. Okay. Okay. Wow. Well, Very great. Nice. So we're going to meet some of the people, uh, the members of PBN tonight. And uh, we're doing this live from the Tula restaurant uh, at the top of the uh, Harbor Castle Weston. And, uh, I feel like I'm sun tanning. And so who, we've got Luke. We're going to talk. To, our next guest is going to be Luca Viscardi, the president of Tula. Nice. And wow. uh, then we're going to have Glenn Estrabillo on, uh, author and international real estate mentor. Wow. Then we've got uh, Michael Helicar from uh, Nabel.com. These are all success stories that we're going to be hearing Absolutely. too, right? Eh? Yeah. And uh, our last guest uh, guests will be Ross and Virginia Monroe. They're the owners and the creative de directors of the television shop. So uh, oh, we're really looking forward to hmm. this. And, uh, and uh, Connie, thanks for uh, coming on and doing this. Thank and, you for uh, sharing. Yeah. And we look forward to the networking uh, a little bit later on. Yeah, I'll catch you for the wine. Glass yeah. of wine. And pbn.ca, people can check that out and uh, go see some of those testimonials. Okay, we're going to take a little break and come back with uh, Luca Viscardi right after this.
Okay, welcome back to uh, Liquid Lunch. Uh, it's me, Hugh, with Sandra here, and we've got uh, Luca Viscardi, the uh, president of uh, Tool Lounge. And great to have you here, Luca. Thank you very much. What a Thank you. Beautiful. Well, great for you to have us here because uh, wow. here we are. Wow. Uh, it's a beautiful day, fantastic uh, sun. You do? must love coming yes. to work every day. What a view. Actually, it's a plus. Just because the, the rent was too high when <laughs> we made agreement. But I just too so late. <laughs> I'm joking. Is it fair to say the rent well, equals the, the, the height yeah. that we're at? It's okay. probably... But the view, because obviously, no, I'm joking. That was a good deal. But anyways, the, of course, the view, the, the light and everything. No, it's a pleasure to come every day. No work kidding. here, not only for, only for me, but even for the people. You know, yes. Give you the city perspective from a different angle, which is phenomenal. What's really nice about this, too, is there's not a bad seat in the house. No. There's not because the view is all the way was around. A, was a so, Luca, you've been, uh, now we've got the PBN event here, and I understand that the restaurant opened in 2001, and PBN the, has been doing their events here since 2001. Yeah, so once you say that, they're uh, like uh, very um, familiar with, <laughs> with this location. Always been here, Karim, everybody. So yeah. you've been part of it from the get-go. Yeah, they're gonna yeah. get it. Yeah, I believe that was one of the first events that we organized. Wow. So obviously, after 10 years, very even nice. more than 10 years, the, the, our record uh, start to be very large, which is a good thing for us. Yeah. Now, I'm just curious, but what was it that prompted you to say yes when PBM came to you and, and, and said, can we do our events here at Tula? Like, what was it that attracted you to, you know, to say yes to I that? I believe a lot on networking, marketing in general. I believe that, especially came for a country as Italy, open restaurant all over the world because we have restaurants in Rome, uh, Tokyo, Kuala Lumpur. To put people together for mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. is a plus. Well, plus you're also a member of the yes. group as well. And so. it's uh, something which in a different shape if I do even with a different other uh, event or organization. For me the networking is, is something which I uh, truly believe in. Now you mentioned those restaurants in other locations all over the world. Did, were, you, were you involved in those? Yes, it's my, rest, it's my business uh, like for um, 29 years, which brought me in Canada, but uh, take me in Europe, Asia. So it sounds like that Tula is really uh, like, call it a world-class restaurant here in Toronto, mm. and you're, you've got the job of making that happen. Yes, uh, we made we the decision to come in Toronto, and we are very happy because 11 years on the business is uh, in North America starts to be a very important uh, record. And, and what do you think? So you've been in Toronto for for how long? Have you? Yeah, we opened two thousand and one. Okay. So what what have you have you seen the city evolve in those ten years in terms, of especially how it relates to to us? The city is uh, coming from Europe, where everything uh, is changing, but more on the social scene, mm -hmm. not on the architectural, because the city are very, uh, for example, Milano, a phenomenal city, but. You don't see the, uh, we say the skyline change because everything is uh, built uh, five, six hundred no years before, yeah. and everything is going to be uh, renovated, but not recreated. Obviously, yeah. Toronto is a city. I have the photo for eleven years ago, and now the skyline is totally different. Everything around uh, waterfront project, everything is totally 
change uh, I think in a better way because obviously the city explodes uh, demographically. And well, I guess one advantage of Tula is despite the fact that the city skyline is growing, there's very little chance of somebody building a higher building yes. between you here and the lake because you're right on the lake. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> It, it actually it. makes you appreciate the view even more too yeah, because it becomes yeah. more congested, right? I think that uh, always uh, being, I'm a traveler, I mean, in different places in the world, uh, I don't think there exists a place with a view that we have here. The perspective uh, is quite uh, fantastic. I never see something like that in my life. And yeah. do you think you get more people here that are uh, visiting Toronto or people that live in Toronto coming to Tula? I love a visitor. Of course, Toronto need uh, tourists, uh, need tourists, need convention. Need it's, it's a beautiful city. Was I believe the at the moment the, the number one convention city in the world. I hope yeah. we're gonna take the lead back soon. But this uh, is a beautiful city. We need the visitor, we need the uh, uh, tourists. Uh, I love them. I love uh, obviously my Toronto clientele. And uh, this is an international restaurant. We're very. Uh, we say 360 degrees in, in terms of uh, mm -hmm. uh, diversification of the clientele. Mm -hmm. In, so in terms of quality price, because you can play with our menu in a hundred million different ways. Mm -hmm. So speaking to the menu, what kind of food do you have? Is it strictly Italian food. Ah, oh, it's Italian. From uh, Veneto, because the restaurant started 60 years ago in Veneto. Oh. It's the region where Venice the city of Venice and we do a Venetian Italian cuisine but with Venetian influence which mm -hmm. is uh, everything is done here in the house from pasta uh, dessert everything is done in the house even the bread wow even wow. the bread yes everything wow which is I believe uh, is the what you want to offer to yes. the people is something that is not possible to recreate in your house and your yes. home with your friends that you obviously want to have an experience uh, uh, which original. Mm -hmm. I believe in ethnic cuisine. Mm -hmm. I like original mm -hmm. things. Pasta must be al dente. The risotto need to take 18 minutes, no less. But there are certain rules that need to be followed and I think uh, if you like original cuisine, uh, you are you're gonna love Appreciate what we can offer here. Wow. Well, I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. <laughs> I <So>. know. I, <laughs> Italian food. Who doesn't so, like Italian? Maybe we'll get a chance to uh, sample. to sample later on. But uh, Luca, thanks for coming Thank on the show. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure, and I hope you can enjoy the rest of the night. Thank okay. You so and much. is there a website? Is there a website if people want to uh, yes. you know check out in advance, yes, or definitely. can they make reservations online? Of course, I can make a reservation online. We're on open table. We're on different type of different uh, option. Uh, program with the Marvish package, with the West, we're doing a lot of beautiful combination, even to uh, go to Tura from the different perspective, not and for the regular one. And what's the website? Uh, www.tularestaurant.com Tula is T-O-U-L-A T-O-U-L-A yeah. okay, I used to know go, a girl named Tula Who is Tula? That's what I have to ask Who is Tula? Tula is uh, because the first restaurant we opened is, uh, was in Cortina Dampez, okay. which is uh, one of the most beautiful cities on the Alps if you like to ski mm -hmm. I recommend you go there because it's uh, a okay. place in the most beautiful mountains in the world and the first restaurant we opened more than 60 years ago, not me, the founder of the company, Arturo Filippini, which is ah, Ciao, okay. Ciao Arturo, he's okay. working on television. Uh, when they take this house, uh, which is, uh, looks like uh, this uh, a chalet, mm -hmm. but where the people, they live in this particular city, which is very old, they used to call Tula because it was an old house where they used to put uh, uh, the how you call um, when you work on the land oh, okay. it was like a storage wow okay okay all in wood and uh, cottage we oh, say okay. open space okay. and uh, the people in the dialect used to call this type of house tula ah. they bought it they made this phenomenal renovation they keep the structure because it's very in stone and wood they create a restaurant inside because this uh, particular tula have the best view of the valley 
Nice. And the creator, and so they like the words, and they. Wow. So there's the history. Over. And they had a view of the valley, yes. and we've got a view of the city yes. and the lake here today. All over so. the place. Wow. <laughs> okay, Luca. Nice. Thanks Thank you very much. Thank you. We're gonna take a little break and uh, come back uh, yes. with our next guest. Right now.
Okay, welcome back to the show. It's me, Hugh Sanders here, and uh, we've got Michael Halakar. To talk about your favorite topic. Well, one of my favorite topics <laughs> for sure, and that's barter, because you're uh, the uh, president of the Barter Bank, right, Michael? That's correct. That's very cool. Since what is 1994. That? Since 1994. Okay, so first of all, I got to ask you, like, what's the story of how you started? How I started? Yeah. I spent 26 years selling photocopiers. And during okay. that time, yeah. everybody wanted to trade me for whatever they had for a photocopier. Yeah. So I thought, why not make a business of it? Right, okay. So they didn't want so. to pay you? Well, everybody wanted to, like, for example, we uh, opened a new office, uh, we needed a phone system, the guy with, with the phone system wanted a photocopier, so we traded. Okay. And that's, that's then how you we avoid law taxes, but I guess I shouldn't. Well, no, say that. it doesn't. You I'm, don't avoid taxes, no. right, Michael? Barter events are taxable events and have to be treated as such. See, there you go. That's not fair. In the U.S., barter exchanges are required to issue a 1099B to all their member companies of all their sales during the year. We're not required to do that in Canada. What's a 1099? It's, a, it's an IRS form. Oh, okay. So they have to actually register it with yeah. the equivalent of That's right. Canada so revenue. They yeah. have to, the IRS goes a step further. They don't rely on honesty. They want to make sure they that they get up. their pound of flesh. Okay. But in Canada, we rely on honesty. That's correct. Well, okay. So, um, so you started, and how did you start? Or like, you know, what was the... I mean, it's one thing to want to do a barter net, but then you have yeah. to figure out the details. Did you look for other companies as models or? During uh, my time in the copier business, uh, I had been approached by some barter companies and uh, I participated and it worked so well for me that I said, hey, that's a good business and if it works for me, it'll work for other people. Mm -hmm. wow. And uh, so, wow. the so so how does it actually work? We are an association of member companies. Okay. And they trade their goods and services with one another without using cash. We record in our computer system all the transactions. So hence, the Barter Bank. So we're nothing more than a bank. We keep track of all the transactions, everybody's barter balances. Now, how do, how do you make your money? Because you obviously barter a lot. We charge a fee for the service. Okay, okay. Yeah. Should well, we talk about that? We, I, right learned, now? I learned from the banks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope you don't overcharge like they do. <laughs> no. Do you charge interest? Yes. Oh, see, they char he charges interest. Okay. Yes. So how does so how does it work? Like, how does the do you want to talk about what? Yeah, those sure. Char charges um, are? There, we charge a membership fee. Yeah. Uh, which is a one-time membership fee. It's a nominal two ninety-five. Uh, it's more of a commitment fee than anything. Mm -hmm. if, if you get something for free, it's got no value. So when if you pay for it. So, two ninety five a year. Two hundred ninety five period one okay. time. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, then we charge uh, a five percent transaction fee on both purchases and sales. Got it. And that's where we earn our money. Okay. Okay, okay. and you charge that in Canadian in, dollars. In dollars. Yeah. Okay. All right. And how does it work then with the tax? How do, how do you account for all the tax? It's, uh, we, we have it all done in our computer system. Um, if you sold something for, say, $1,000, this, this, you know, $130 HST, yeah. it's up to you to report that and, co and collect it. Okay. So you're so. just like a holding place. You don't take any responsibility for how they run no, their business. No, it's, it's, all we are is a third-party record keeper, okay. the same okay. as a bank. That's, that's a good oh, way to Oh, very okay. interesting. So do you have credit cards like the banks and debit cards like the banks? We're not that sophisticated. <laughs> so how do they report yeah. their transactions? Do they just phone it in or is it online or? Uh, it's, it's online or it can be phoned in. 
Okay. So do you log in? If you if you if I'm doing something online, yeah. do I log in? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Actually, we've had that facility online since uh, '98. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. Now, have you had any controversy or any interaction, say, with uh, Canada Revenue about, you know, because they're they're not no. as strict as the IRS is. They must have some concern. Uh, I don't want to rock the boat, but I have never heard from them. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I know, I know the some, of the, some exchanges have been audited by them. Right. Um, but you're just a record haven't. keeper. That's right. right. You're just... Yeah. Information. So are there information. a lot of guys out there that do this kind of thing? Because you said there are other people. It, I've never heard yeah, of this before. Uh, it's worldwide. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. Wow. See, every business has surplus capacity. Okay. Barter is about utilization of that surplus capacity. Yeah. Take, for example, this rest, uh, well, this hotel, okay? Hmm. If the hotel has got empty rooms tonight, the potential revenue from those rooms is lost and gone forever. So mm -hmm. that's what's mm -hmm. okay. So, so what is sur surplus capacity? Every, that's every what is that? Business. Every empty bed in the hotel. Yeah. Is so every okay. empty seat in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, a dentist or a chiropractor with unbooked appointments. Uh, but does it have to be just for surplus capacity, though? Couldn't you use no. the bartering system for things for just regular business, too? Well, yeah. It's like, what I'm saying, though, is that every business can, can manage to do extra business through barter. Okay, I see. Okay. okay. On top of. On top. Yeah. Okay, you know, I that's see. That's starting to remind me of, uh, you know, one of the, some people criticize the monetary system for restricting economic activity. When dollars are in short supply, it makes it difficult for people to trade with one another, even though there's all this extra mm -hmm. excess capacity yes. around. Now, do you have that's a... Right. Do you have a philosophical, is there any philosophical approach to this that you, that you bring to, to the business? Well, if a business doesn't have the cash to purchase what they want, um, then, you know, logically they would try and find an alternative. Right. An alternative form of financing. Right. And that's what we are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, you need widgets and you haven't, haven't got the cash to buy them. Okay, Maybe then you can do something else. Then you can barter what you've got to, and buy the, the widgets through with your barter dollars that you generated. Because there's there are other organizations that are more less business uh, or don't come come at it less from a business perspective than a sort of a social mm -hmm. perspective and they're you know they're just trying to facil facilitate transactions and um, without barter. the use of actual money. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, well, the majority. Like, do, you have, do people do this? Can you do this if you don't have an income? Like, can you do this without having to exchange money at all? Like, yeah, for yeah. people that have low income, do do do. Can they? We, is there a place okay, for them? there there are barter systems for individuals. Uh, we're a corporate barter exchange. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. we, okay. We only deal with businesses. Okay. We don't I see. deal so much with individuals okay. unless the individual is a sole practitioner got it. someone who's got like a lawyer or a hairdresser or okay somebody, somebody like. that's got some some capacity yes to offer other people yeah. of the network right you you have to be able to uh, offer something otherwise yes. uh, mm -hmm. you know, it wouldn't work Okay, so how many members approximately do you have currently? About 500. 500 in, members? In the GTA. Uh, we had more in the U.S., but I sold that operation in the U.S. Okay. Uh, a few years ago. Okay, so this is now, it's the Barter Bank, and so your area, is is it just the GTA, or is it Ontario? No, um, we have representation in Ontario and the Maritimes. Okay. okay, and are you looking to expand, or are there any new plans on the horizon? You guys? Well, my original thought when I first got into this was, wouldn't it be great to be able to go anywhere like, and use a, a barter credit card, as it were, mm -hmm. um, you know, to go into a hotel or a restaurant mm -hmm. anywhere mm -hmm. from coast to coast because business people travel. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's done to a certain extent through reciprocal agreements with other exchanges in other okay. cities. Okay, Okay. so you work with other barter type banks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Now, your association with PBN, 
Professional Business Network. Yes. You're a member. And you're here tonight for the networking, right? I am. I've known Karim for many years. Now, have you bartered with some of the organizations in the, here as well? Like, are, has, how, Because I would think that it's a perfect match. Some of the members are members with me, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. I see, okay. And so probably you can get more members. That's right. Like, yeah. yeah, okay. I'm well, catching gonna, on. I'm there's going to be a on. few maybe yeah. tonight because uh, we're, we're going to do some networking later on. Yes. And, uh, exactly, yeah. Are you waiting until after the idea. wine though, right? Yes. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is this is great. Now, if somebody wanted to find out more or maybe join uh, the Barter Bank, like, what's the website where they can go? Okay, and it's triple w dot nabel dot com. That's n a b e l dot com. Okay. Now, what is that? That doesn't. That's uh, that's that's the acronym for North American Barter Exchange Limited. Okay, there you ah, go. Ah, okay. okay. I was going to ask who is Nabel. Well, we had who is Tula? Who is Nabel? I thought it was maybe your mom Mabel with an N. No. <laughs> Well, this is great, George, uh, George, Michael, and I look forward to uh, uh, afterwards to, um, you know, just maybe just getting, having more conversation about this. I think it's a really it's a cool great idea. opportunity for yeah. any business mm -hmm. to get involved and start to, very to cool do that very cool idea. Yeah. And use that capacity. Yeah, use right. It works very, very well. Okay. Nabel.com. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Michael. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. So we're going to take a little break. Come back with our next guest as Liquid Lunch continues live from the Tula Lounge right after this. Hello, I'm Michael Hellicar from North American Barter Exchange. We are an association of member companies who trade their goods and services with one another without using cash. Every company has surplus capacity and barter is all about utilization of that surplus capacity. If you would like to increase your sales, reduce your cash expenses, and improve your bottom line, give me a call, 416-231-5115, or visit our website at www.nabel.com, that's N-A-B-E-L.com. Yokohama, or get out of the way, now you've got control. In life's little ups and downs, you often need a solution that really sticks. And that's why you should always have super fast, super strong, crazy glue. What are you thinking about right now? You should be thinking about the Great Hospitals Lottery. A hundred bucks could win you one of three dream houses. Or 27 luxury cars. Plus a Harley Davidson. Personal watercraft. Exotic vacations. Over 8,600 prizes. Great Hospitals Lottery. Feeling a little trapped by those big phone companies? They tie you up with expensive contracts. Thousands of Canadians are switching. We'll cut the cord and get Comwave home phone service. Solving the schmuzzle puzzle is one of life's most fun and rewarding challenges. But you should really try not to take your difficulties too seriously. Like Bob here. The Schmuzzle Puzzle. Get it together. You may never have to find out how much control Yokohama all-season tires really give you. It's always there if you need it. No matter what kind of car you drive, Yokohama, now you've got control. Only Medical Alert is Medical Alert. With instantaneous access to your critical health data anywhere in the world, the information your life could depend on is always on call. Even when you're on the move, you can put the bite on a full serving of vegetables. V8 Vegetable Cocktail. Vegetables to go. I got it. A gift certificate to my re-election party. Free hot dogs. Free condiments. And napkins with my picture on it. They're gonna love me. Maybe I'll give them Famous Players gift certificates. Cost of long distance calling can really make you feel like you're running out of time. So stop with the fast talk. Hello? Oh, 
Yokohama, or get out of the way. Now you've got control. Solving the Schmuzzle Puzzle is one of life's most fun and rewarding challenges. But never, never distract anybody when they're finally about to finish the Schmuzzle Puzzle. Get it together. Only Medic Alert is Medic Alert. With a complete database of all your health records, the information your life could depend on is always on the way. Think maybe it's time you got a new suit? Come to the Suit Exchange and get the big names from the biggest menswear designers from around the world. Yokohama? Or get out of the way. Now you've got control. I've got it! <laughs> Gift certificate from Chubby Burger. <laughs> She's gonna love me! Maybe I'll give her famous players gift certificates instead. Only Medic Alert is Medic Alert. With your critical records accessible worldwide in 140 languages, the information your life could depend on is always on call. Keeping up with the cost of talking on your mobile phone can be completely exhausting. Call now to add Comwave Unlimited Mobile to your cell phone. Solving the Schmuzzle Puzzle is one of life's most fun and rewarding challenges. But if you think it's going to be easy, dream on. The Schmuzzle Puzzle. Honey, Get it together. Are you coming to bed? Dirty ducks. Fill your house with dust and dirt and aggravate allergies. You need the professionals. Ontario Duct Cleaning. When you have to get the jump on life, get new Guard X 600 Winter Radials from Yokohama. New Yokohama Guard X 600 Winter Radials. Now you've got control. A cough or sore throat? Aren't you glad you have friends? Like Fisherman's Friend Medicated Lozenges. So for coughs, sore throats, even nasal congestion, try Fisherman's Friend Medicated Lozenges with over 100 years of effectiveness. Okay, welcome back to the show here. Well, I got tell it was a married couple. Look, I got a, I got a different mic now. We're gonna have to do this, okay? I know, I know. Here we go again. It's because we have a couple here. Yes, yes. we have uh, Ross Monroe and Virginia Monroe, Monroe who are married. They're That's not just correct. a couple. They're also no, no, no. married. <laughs> we're, no, no, we're still married. <laughs> and That's they worked after together. all these years. Oh, and you worked. I mean, I can't work with my sister. Never mind my partner. My God. Well, if this is live, you can't have sex with your sister. <laughs> no, no, they changed that rule <laughs> last Does year. Beep. We're taking that out. Beep. Beep. Okay, you're being charged extra for that, Ross. Really? <laughs> Only if he wants it. <laughs> yeah. Does he, okay. If he wants sex? I, no, not sex. <laughs> Well, no. Let's stop talking about sex, Sandra. Is this going on? I never yes. said that word. I never said that word. Did I, did I say that word? No, no. No, I just... No. Yes, I yeah, think I did. Yeah. No, I think you did. Yeah. Okay, shoot. Let's go. Okay, <laughs> quick. Okay, let's get down no. to the serious stuff. Okay. So, yeah, you guys are... Uh, it's called the television shop. Yes. Dot com is so the website. Because we're coming shop. To the team. Yeah, yeah. But, okay, well, so what is a television shop? Yeah. Because, I mean, Virginia, you said you do interviews. You're usually doing the interview, right? So um, I, yeah, I do. I've done interviews in in um, okay. uh, for Waterfront Magazine, for uh, Vanna Fair Magazine. We do. Oh, uh, uh, we and edit and write for stuff. magazines. It's but it's TV too, core. right? Cable stuff. Yeah. It's so what, yeah. what is a television shop? Uh, basically, we shoot TV commercials. Oh, um, are you like an agency? Um, we're like an agency, a boutique agency, and production company. So um, my background is as a creative director in bigger agencies. Oh, okay. So then uh, what I started to do, well, we went independent. We both write. Um, so we're working for, you know, a couple of dozen ad agencies around the world here in North America and in Europe and Japan. Wow, okay. But then what nice. happened was um, we started hiring ourselves as the production people. Because when you write 
a concept for a client, um, only the creative directors know how it should be shot. So after a while, we thought we would just cut out the, the fat between the agency and the client. So we started hiring ourselves and shooting ourselves. So, so for about 15 years, we've been shooting the commercials as well as writing. Wow. Yeah, and the tagline for the television shop is fat-free TV. Oh, yeah. Because you cut out all the fat, you know, the unnecessary. Wow, that's a cool money. concept. Yeah. But we're talking about high-end corporate, you know, yeah. international commercials. So Can you give us an a, a well, we're example? Gonna, we're going we're gonna to see some later, oh, but are? yeah, if you okay. want to mention some of your clients, oh, but we're going to run a, a reel later. I mean, we've done hundreds. So Can you just throw a couple gonna out? you're going to see some of them later. Um, now, which ones we shot or which ones we wrote? Yokohama Tire, um, ah. Crazy Glue we wrote. Um, Did you, was it your idea to put the glue and, and on the football crossbars? Uh, unfortunately, no, but I did, uh, I did steal <laughs> that later. <laughs> that was done out of the States and then I had to rip it off. Actually, I did a thing where um, um, they were crazy gluing the border of Quebec and Ontario together. You did that? Uh, yeah. I don't remember yeah. seeing that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it sounds like a great concept. It's yeah. a great concept. And in fact, a concept that might be badly needed over the next couple of and weeks. They, exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly, yes. Exactly. Yeah, we thought yeah. we were all done with that, but n not so. Yeah. 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 It was subtle, actually. Our PR idea was for um, the Prime Minister to actually go and crazy glue the two provinces <laughs> together. And instead we had a guy, a French guy and an English guy who had the hard hat, and they dropped the glue, oh. and they, they bend over, and their, their hats... Oh, glue together. Yeah, so one like English, a, one French. That yeah. did air. That, okay, yeah, I remember flash. that one yeah, now. Yeah, that aired, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. I, I wasn't, sh didn't know, or maybe I forgot that it was a, a French, Canadian, uh, English yeah, it was guy. Yes, Canadian. yes, yeah, yeah. Wow. But, you know, actually we've done hundreds and hundreds yeah, that we've all, shot all kinds, and hundreds and yeah. hundreds. But right now we're just launched, we just finished five uh, kids commercials that are going to like, 500 million kids are going to see them. Yeah, it's called Rocks. And you'll see them on, oh. if you watch YTV, which I'm sure you do. That's and, all I well, watch. Well, Hugh does. <laughs> and I'm still we, learning. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Can, can we say ass? <laughs> What's ass? Kick ass? You mean yeah, like the mule? Kick ass, yeah. Okay, well, you know what? We've talked about sex. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're kick ass commercials. We they're did, just they're, fantastic. We spent five yeah. months doing them. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, they're fabulous. <laughs> um, so it's rocksnation.com. Kick ass. That's with two X's, yeah, right? Yeah, kick That's ass. with two X's. Yeah. But okay. you're going to know because you're going to be overwhelmed. Uh oh. Um, so they're cool. They're just cool. Okay. I mean, we lost money doing it. And. Uh, Nobody cares about us, but I'm just saying it was just a great five. Yeah, Thank God we. Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't be saying that. But you're Canadian, so you're and you're nice, so that's okay. Yeah, right. So it's okay to lose money. We're yes. Because we were, we're Canadian yeah, we're and we're nice. Days. Nobody's watching we're this. Days. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Like, yeah. Um, Crazy. It was such a great project that we, we loved it and we invested. Yeah, it. absolutely. We made absolutely. it bigger than. Yeah. That's yeah, it. Because the, we're going to have to pay a lot to get this footage back. <laughs> You're going to end up with like one or two words. You're paying us too. <laughs> no, I yeah. mean, because what you want to do I hope we didn't is, just lose the client. Yeah, what you want to do is you want to... You want to love what you're doing. You want to be passionate about what you're doing, which you two obviously yes. are, and we are. That's what you want. That's what you want for your life. You get up in the morning and you're excited about what you're going to do. But we haven't mentioned the Waterfront Agency. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, so we're editors of Waterfront Magazine with Kareem Urshahi. Yeah. And, um, and uh, so as an adjunct to that, uh, we're creative directors in the Waterfront Agency, which uh, provides marketing communications, you know, brand positioning and print and all of that to uh, clients. Uh, yeah. So there's a dovetailing between uh, the agency and, and the a, TV. And just a gorgeous website for Waterfront Agency. So how does that work it's though? Beautiful. The TV idea with the print medium, how does well, that dovetail? Well, if you go on waterfront-agency.com, the TV, that there's print on there, there's billboards, there's you know websites, and then there's TV. Yeah. So, you know, the Waterfront Agency is hiring the left hand knows what the right hand is doing okay so that's yeah. great so i want to ask you about because really the world of media has changed so much in the last 10 50, yeah. since the internet yeah. came along I and i would think that uh there's uh, my, my fault i think that everybody needs to be and should be and is starting to use tv to communicate Whereas before it was just the big guys that had yeah. a lot of money. Now everybody's yeah, yeah. doing it. Have you seen, what kind of changes have you seen in the business? And are, are there opportunities, uh, you know, new opportunities for a company like the television shop to take advantage of? Um, yeah, I would say this. Um, 
um, I don't watch TV because we're too busy. Because you're making it. We're making it. <laughs> so, and also, I don't want to be dumbed down yeah. by the common denominator. You know, I, I want to, we have, dr at night we go to sleep, we have dreams, we wake up about, and talk about them. Mm -hmm. So we have a philosophy which is the more exposure we have to mainstream media or even uh, internet based media, the more it confuse, you know, it, it di di erodes our uniqueness. Yeah. Okay. So you try to stay outside of it so you can bring some new perspective. Exactly, because you get a unique idea. Okay. Because what people tend to do in the media is everything is derivative. So, you know, they watch this, they watch that. Is it friends? Is it, you know, um, right. um, sex in the city? And so that everything becomes a joke upon a joke upon a joke. Right. Whereas we are creative, born creative, and, and all our inspiration is around us. It's like, it's like what you're talking about is the media becomes a mirror of itself. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then yes, there's nothing exactly. new to come into that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Whereas we're born like with the ability to completely create new things. So. But uh, what about the, the idea that although it's not TV, but the fact that people are using the internet and more people can use the internet, does that open up whole new vistas of clientele for you? you no, think? because, uh, you know, we, our clients have money. So, you know, they use the internet. So everything okay. goes up on YouTube. Okay, so they don't you know, have right. to be independent. But I, I would just like to say something, yeah. which is that we have, we do have um, clients that we do copywriting for, um, uh, you know, and produce commercials for all over the world through the internet. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole, you know, it's a world market now that yeah. where you don't have to meet because right. you meet over the internet. Right. So definitely that. But also we, we write websites. You know, and we the write websites, wants TV, they yeah. get TV. If they want websites, yeah. they get a website. Because a yeah. website can be any and all forms of media. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. social, yeah, and social but it, media. But it, it, it kind of reminds me, because you mentioned the dumbing down, and that's what TV is, yeah. right? Uh, but with the uh, with doing video, which is the same as TV on the internet, though, yeah. you don't have to be dumbed down, because you can take advantage of the long tail phenomenon the you know the global aggregation of a micro niche over the mm. global marketplace yeah and, and not only that you're not limited by the strictures of television exactly exactly I mean, yeah, regulatory yeah. Strictures. Yeah. yeah you know with kid pack shots or kids or you know you know mm -hmm. you can be more and also it's more free-flowing because it's uh not as expensive i mean the media mm -hmm. buy for tv mm -hmm. is like a fortune yeah absolutely yeah whereas on the internet you can afford to throw some jelly at the wall Right. So, what, what kind of do you guys just deal with big clients, or do you guys deal with small clients too? Big clients. Big clients. Big clients. Yeah. Okay. No, because if they don't have the money at my age, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. I mean, we'll do something for fun. Yeah. You know, we just did a video for the Unison. Uh, oh, we do. Yeah, we do Unison things. What? Uh, the un the one the Unison Fund, Unison which fund. is a which is a uh, I won't call it charitable, but a fund for musicians. Yeah. Um, Who fall on hard times. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah and so that was so, pro bono. And we we did that, you know, as a gift, and and we've done that, you know, for different clients. They ha they have their particular charity, and we do that for them. Nice. Yeah. Boy, that sounds so. like it could be a giant charity because uh, I don't know a musician who hasn't fallen on hard no, times. No, well, we I know. I don't want to make jokes that. about Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, 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 if yeah. they yeah. have it, they're in the states, <laughs> right? <laughs> Apparently it's working. Say? We did the video and uh, uh, we left it up to them. Like okay. how, how they're going to pay. Yeah, them we're out. not marketing video. No. it's on their website. No. And that's it. Yeah. But also, you know, I mean, if somebody has an interesting project, then we'll look at it. Mm -hmm. It's just that I don't want to be too unkind here, but you don't can't make a good living on nickels and dimes. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay, guys. Well. Uh this has been a lot of fun. Is there anything uh, you want to mention or any final pitch you want well, to make? I was going to tell a couple of jokes. But. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, how about this? You know, I, I, know, I know how you, you know how we can tell you're creative? How? It's because you're not wearing any socks. I'm not wearing any shoes. Well, it's not even Labor Day yet. It's still okay. <laughs> and, I, and I have no pants on. Oh, my. I know, because it's a two-shot. Oh, wait. It's only and this is oh, why. Oh, that's right? you, Ross. Now, Virginia, what aren't you wearing? She's not I'm, wearing pants. I'm, I'm not wearing socks, but I'm wearing everything else. Okay. I'm even wearing pants. Uh oh, oh see, see, I was yeah. just going to no. say, how do we know, though? Okay, you've just can proven it. Can I tell it. a five-second yeah. okay. joke? Yes. It's ten seconds. Oh, okay. It's not a bad uh, It's not that bad. So a, uh, a rabbi, okay, and a mullah and a priest walk into a bar and they go up to the bartender, and the bartender says, what is this, a joke? They're laughing out there. <laughs> That's it.
Bye. Okay. We have another interview. We're out of here. Leave them wanting more. Okay. So okay. We have to get these uh, things. So uh, before you go there, just Ross, I'm just going to give out your website, the television shop dot com. Shoppy. Like uh, the old time shoppy, right? Yeah, the television shop. Actually, they both go there. So television yeah. Okay. The television shop. Okay, great. Not just any. Yeah. It's the television shop. Okay, Did guys. I break your mic? No, uh, probably. Oh, I hope. Anyway, great to have you guys on, and oh, uh, guys we'll be back in a minute with our Thank next you. guest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You Thank guys you guys. It's a big world and you want to do big yo. tricks. So grab the Omega Power Brain XP yo. or Maverick and do the big yo. Maverick yo. is a high speed, high performance aluminum yo-yo yo. with a wing design for the most advanced tricking. The patented clutch system Power Brain XP snaps back on its own or flick the smart yo. switch and let it yo. ride. Maverick comes yo. with this big trick DVD. So get a yo Omega Maverick and a Power Brain XP and yo big, each yo. sold separately. Rocksnation.com to learn more. Rock, rock. This is fun from TCG. Rocks, blisters, and flow packs each sold separately. Sitting on the beach with the love of my life, enjoying a corona, experiencing absolute freedom. I remember I, when I made that decision to save my own finances with my own hands. And three years from the day I made that decision, using my system that I've taken a whole lifetime to implement, I retire. And this system is what I would love to transfer to all of you. Just three simple steps. Mindset, mechanics, and mentorship. And if you give me the opportunity, I would love to empower and enable all of you to retire yourselves in less than five years. Okay, welcome back to the show. It's me, Hugh, and Sandra's here, and it's getting noisy in yeah, here, Sandra. Yeah, it is. It is. You can tell things are heating up. The crowd is starting to fill in, uh, not just the dinner crowd, but also the uh, networking crowd for, uh, for PBN. Yes. It looks like it's uh, really warming up now, eh? I don't have to do this anymore because you got your own mic. Oh, that's true. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, we you got... You suckered uh, me. I, I, I forgot. Oh, oh, it's, uh, yeah. Anyway, we got Glenn Estrabillo joining us here. Hi, Glenn. Hello. And uh, Glenn's here for the networking. And I remember Glenn because the time I was here at PBN before, Glenn was... You were speaking at that event. Right, that's Glenn? That's right. Glenn's yeah. quite a, an amazing story. Well, he... Because cause you retired at 28. Retired right? at 28. You need to do an infomercial. <laughs> I should definitely do an infomercial. <laughs> okay, so first of all, Glenn, just to give us a little bit of an introduction, yep. uh, how did you retire at 28? Just to give us an idea of, of where you're coming from and Absolutely. what your business is. Yeah, well, my background is engineering, and um, I'd always uh, wanted to start my own business. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mentor is uh, Robert Kiyosaki, uh, the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I read all his books and I thought, wow, I can just invest in real estate, right? Should be pretty easy. So that's what I started doing. I started with a very small house in, um, in the university town. Turned in Canada? In, in Canada, in Hamilton, right okay. by McMaster University. I was and just in Hamilton yesterday. Were you? It's a you fabulous were just in town. Welland yesterday. In Steel fact, Town. If, yeah. In fact, my brother-in-law was with. He he bought some property. I know, he bought a roomy house on King Street in Hamilton. We went and checked it out yesterday. Oh, see, there yeah. you go. I guess that's a good place to start. It's, it's a, a good, good place. place to start. Yeah. yeah, I bought it and turned it into a student rental. Rented it out to students because um, I felt I could relate to that demographic. Yeah. And you know, that first house was netting me about a thousand bucks a month. So I'm looking at this one property and my engineering job and I'm doing calculations thinking, a few of these and that income will be able to replace my engineering income. So for the next three years, that's exactly what I did. I went from one property to 10 properties in the next year and a half. Wow. And I was able to um, replace my income and be able to choose 
to stay in my engineering job and do both, or just okay. What have did the you do? What then. did you do? I went and just chose to just have the passive income. Oh, you, you mean you didn't choose to, to be an job. engineer because you love to do it? <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> Although I did love engineering, I uh -huh. loved having more time freedom to do what I want when I wanted. Tell and me I just it. couldn't For really sure. do that with a nine to five job. Wow. There's Absolutely. So, so how, can I ask you how many properties you own today? Yeah, today, uh, myself personally, over 40 units, myself, um, and between uh, Canada and the U.S. Okay, okay. so the U.S. too. Yes. Right. Now, the last time I was here, you were speaking about the opportunities for Canadians investing in the U.S. real estate market. We all know what happened in 2008, that U.S. property values in, in most markets just started to tumble. Yes. And uh, in a, it's been a few months since uh, you, I heard you speak the last time. Mm -hmm. What's going on with U.S. real estate today? And how, where's it trending? Well, right now, great question. It's, it's trending. Um, the mood in the U.S. is very positive. We're starting to see a lot of really? data yeah, coming out. With The housing price index uh, okay. is actually upticking. And certain cities, and no coincidence, the cities where I invest, have shown year-over-year -year percentage gains. Now, don't get me wrong. There are cities that are showing losses. But the mood is actually a little bit much more positive, especially we had, I think Warren Buffett came out and publicly declared, you know, housing will come back and he's betting big on housing. So we get a very highly sophisticated investor like Warren Buffett. That's like has, an Oprah. Yeah, absolutely. That's like the magnitude of an Oprah saying, buy this book. And we had Warren Buffett say, Housing is where it's at. I'm betting big on housing. Wow. So it's a validation. Okay, so doing. there's certain statistics, Warren Buffett, but, but how do you gauge the mood in the U.S.? Because you said the mood is, is, is trending upwards. Yeah. How do you gauge that? Here's what I'm finding. I used to be able to be the only person bidding on a house to purchase. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer the only person. For a house that I used to purchase for under $50,000, can't do that anymore. Okay. They're now sixty, seventy thousand dollars. So I'm, I'm personally seeing at the auctions, price increases and more people bidding for the same assets. So that tells so me greater competition. Yeah. Okay. That tells okay. me that trend is is getting higher. What iron. states are we talking about in the states? Uh, where where I invest is uh, the states of like Arizona, Texas. Okay. I'm also in Southwest Florida and Michigan. So why are these places good and other states don't not? There's, a, there's several factors. There's about 36 factors I go by. Oh my God. But the number one thing that I track, which is the most easiest, is the median house price in that geographic region divided by the average annual rent. You get a ratio. And if that ratio is under 10, it's what the Wall Street Journal and I call a sweet deal. Okay, you know what? We're okay, going to have to replay. Sort of engineering I'm glad we're something. taking this. We're going to have to replay that segment. I think that's gold. Okay, yeah. okay. Gold. Do you have to be an engineer to understand that? No, you don't. Okay, see, so then you can understand it too. Well, I have to go and replay it though. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so, backwards. Yeah, backwards. Replay it backwards. It's, okay, that reminds me of a tubes album, but that's another story. Okay, so, um, uh, Glenn, so now are you in the business of helping people take advantage of this? Yes. And how does that work? So I specifically uh, have uh, positioned myself as an international real estate mentor. Okay. Um, and specifically, because I'm Canadian, um, a lot of my focus is on working ca with Canadians to empower them to find better deals on a dollar-to-dollar -dollar basis in the U.S. And so right now I'm working on um, getting this message out to more and more Canadians. And I've got an event coming up on September 15th in Hamilton where I'm going to be going through the specific steps and the specific strategies on how I did it and teaching other people to do the same thing. Wow. Okay, and that's good for nice. people in Hamilton because I heard that Hamilton is one of the hot cities for opportunity right now in terms of real estate in, in Ontario. How come? Right? Well, how come? Yeah, it's that ratio. It's probably, that ratio. Right? Exactly. It's exactly that ratio. Okay, no, I see? I don't get this. I don't think I have a brain for this Okay, stuff. now, but Glenn, okay, so I want to ask you, though, because now let, let's just take this in reverse. If you look at the Canadian market in general and mm -hmm. you start to apply your ratio, do you see any uh, trouble spots where we might see uh, or at least an underlying rationale for seeing a decline in real estate values in Canada? Any markets in Canada that might be a little overvalued? No, overvalued. Yeah, if you take that ratio in reverse, right now Toronto's 
right at the top of that list and same with out in uh, Vancouver. And now Come on, Vancouver's Calgary. worse, right? <laughs> Vancouver is way worse. Yeah, way worse. Okay, so. good, how about yeah. Calgary? Calgary? Not as high as uh, Toronto and Plus, Vancouver. Calgary's still growing and always will be, at least for the okay, foreseeable so, future. So, so how badly is Toronto? Is Toronto going to go down? <laughs> I don't know if it's going to go down. Remember, there's only one parameter. There's like 36. But according to that one parameter, the, uh, the ratios are very high with respect to house price and average annual rent. So yeah. it doesn't look to be a conducive for investment purposes. Um, but if it's for home ownership, there's a whole other set oh, yeah. of emotions. That's, well, a separate, get, that's a separate way to look at it, right? Where do you get these 36 measure, tool, criteria, whatever you want to call it? Oh, this, this just came over time and experience. Oh, you create this yourself? Yeah. Because ah. I just noticed there are different factors that make more of a more of a difference in the long run of an investment being yeah. feasible and working out. You know what, I'll tell you, you know, that sounds right, Glenn. I, I used to sell real estate. I yeah. know something about it, right? Are you a real estate agent sounds, by any chance? No. See, he's not even a real estate agent. Look at that. Yeah, That's it's better to not to be because then, I think so. otherwise you have to declare that uh, there's a uh, thing. Anyway, that's but right. Glenn, so, um, but that's really interesting. So this is what you're doing now. You're teaching people how to use these 36 factors that you've identified mm -hmm. to uh, help them evaluate uh, uh, real estate investment opportunities, right? Yep, absolutely. Okay, so you're wow, going to be doing amazing. it in Hamilton, and when is that? September 15th. Okay, and, Hamilton, Ontario. and uh, are you going to be doing it in any other locations? Uh, right now, uh, right now, just in Hamilton, we're planning for another one here in Toronto, um, but right now... Is there a website Hamilton's we can okay. go to for yeah. information? Yes, it's uh, www retiremeglenn.com Glenn okay. with one N two or two N's? Doesn't matter, you'll get to the same spot. I should have known. Oh, you know what? We've got a, actually, we've got some video. Retire uh, Me Which Glenn. we're going to play at the beginning of this interview. Cool. I know, because it's a... Everything can be done we'll in do editing. It. We're doing it all in editing, but we, we've got a little clip from your website that we played at the beginning. Oh. I'm just reminding people of Great. that. And uh, so retiremeglenn.com. Yes. And people can check that out and, and get in touch September with you. And September 15th in Hamilton. And anyway, great to have you on the show today, Glenn. Thank you. Thank you for sharing some secrets. Uh, yeah. The You're secret's welcome. out. Uh, yeah. So um, anyway, good to have you on. And, uh, Thank you so much. We just look forward that the Toronto market will just continue Dive. to move steadily. Down. Not down. You don't want to move down? In the right direction. And well, of course, people what get... What if it goes do? down, then yeah. you can buy at a better price. Oh, no wonder that's, you that's, retired from But I already estate. bought. Oh, but I'm you already, already bought. Oh, you're already in. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> then just wait it out, man. Wait it out. <laughs> okay. All right, Glenn. Thanks for doing this. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. And I think we have to end the show, Sandra. We got some technical issues, right? We had fun, though. This was yeah. fun. I feel like I'm baking, but it was fun. Well, the great thing is that it's getting lively in here. The piano player is about to start to play. I know. And we can now stop working and start having fun here at the PBN uh, event. Glenn, you're going to stick around, right? I see that has absolutely. your name okay. on it, Hugh. Well, there's something over there, I'm sure, I hope, has my name on it. <laughs> so anyway, Sandra, thanks for doing this today. Awesome show. Thank you. And uh, thanks, everybody, for participating. Thanks, uh, PBN, and Kareem, and Connie, and all the great guests today. And uh, check out uh, PBN.com. Com. Dot com. Professional and, Business Network. And then you can come here for the next one, which is going to be in September. So thanks, everybody. Live from the Tula Lounge. It's me, Hugh Sandra, and uh, everybody here at PBN, at Tula Restaurant, live. We'll see you next time for more Liquid Lunch. Take care.
Okay, okay, we're back. This is the Liquid Lunch rep- reprise while the piano's playing going. And Mitchell, Am I on okay, there? we have Mitchell okay. Gold on, on the show. Mitchell, I, what, what's I, going on? I've, I've actually come into the show with you, Hugh, because it was this idea of doing the show here was to show that every business that they can have a television station in their business to do exactly this, or they can contract with you to do um, this very thing on site. This is not um, every. This is like a mobile studio that everybody can have in the PBN network, and and um, we're we're not fit fit for barter yet, but we'll be fit for barter soon, and and maybe we, you can barter with the services that you provide in the package that we are going to be building. There will be this this product will be included in the new package. Now what is that thing? This thing is a whole body vibration machine. This will up level every business opportunity. But Mitchell, what if you only need certain parts of your body vibrated? That will be something that you will have to experiment with yourself. And we'll leave it at that and let's listen to this music and have a wonderful evening that we're all together while you're figuring out how to use the vibration machine yourself. Okay. Mitchell, is that it? Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? That was it. Okay. Awesome. All right. Okay. Thanks, Mitchell. Thanks, everybody. Uh, We'll see you next time here on Liquid Lunch. Cheers. Yeah.